All right, so we have to start this episode with a fan question. This is coming from Peyton Rage on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it. Hey, Rays on the radio, how do you feel about MGK saying that there are only two genres of music, good and bad? So this, of course, coming from the People's Country Music Choice, People's Choice Country Music. I didn't even know this was a thing, but he won an award at some sort of country-based award show. It was the people's choice for this one. And he he got up there and he started talking about, you know, he won the crossover song of the year, video of the year. We'll find out in a minute. We'll watch it. But so nonetheless, he basically said, you know, he got a, you know, people have talked about how he keeps switching genres and does he worry about that? And he said, look, there are only two types of music, good and bad. Two genres of music, good and bad. Do I agree? It depends. Depends on what he means by good and what he means by bad. Here's what I mean by that. Music is subjective. What I think is good, you all don't think is good. What I think is bad, you all don't think is bad. What MGK thinks is good, I don't think is good. What MGK thinks is bad, I probably love. So with that said, I'll say this. I don't think this is what he was trying to say, but this is what I will tell you. I do think there is bad music. Here's what I mean by that. I think People who make music only for profit or to look cool or to garner some sort of image or celebrity or something like that, and they use music to do so. And you guys can just use your imaginations. There are plenty of people who you you know who's done this. And I know people who aren't famous that do this in my hometown. That is music that I consider to be bad because I don't think it comes from the heart. Now look, celebrity, money, fame, attention, we all get into it. I don't care what kind of genre you say you are. We all get into it for those reasons, somewhat. But you have to love it to do it. If you don't love it to do it and you're just doing it for a paycheck or you're doing it to buy time until the next thing comes that you can do that will keep your celebrity up or your status up or your fame up or your name trending or whatever the case may be, you don't love it. That's not... That's... That's not what music's about to me. So that I consider to be bad music. I don't think that's what MGK meant, to be honest with you. But I do understand his defense. I do understand the defense of himself by saying that. You know, this is a guy who started in hip-hop, transitioned into... Well, look, I'm an MGK fan. And I will tell you, for those of you that think he was only hip-hop and he just overnight became this pop-punk success or he culture-vultured rock and roll... Go back and listen to some of the older records before when you think he went pop punk. Believe me, there's rock on those records. And go watch live videos of him playing with his band. By the way, he does play with a band. He always has. Go watch videos of him playing live. There's rock elements to everything that he's done for a very long time. So he's defending himself, and I get that. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think he meant what I meant by that. And I think he's being defensive. And that's okay, like I said. No big deal. Now, do I like MGK crossing over into country? Hmm. Not really. But I'm not a country music fan. But we have talked about on the show, I do have bands that are favorites of mine who have dabbled, if you will, dabbled into the country music spectrum. I think there's a line you can walk. I mean, I do think the song that we're about to listen to, is it a country song? No. It's a pop song. And to be honest with you, I'll, I'll say this, and this is probably a not so hot take to a lot of people. If he never goes pop punk, let's just say he stays hip hop, right? And we can even include the beef with Eminem. Him and Eminem beef, he stays hip hop. And he puts out this Lonely Road song. I could see it being played on hip hop stations, in a sense. Now you have to erase all the pop punk. Tickets to My Downfall never comes out. You don't see any of this. But if he's still hip hop, and then he does this song. It's a crossover song onto pop radio, hip hop radio. Well, it's not crossover because he was always hip hop, but onto pop radio. It's on hip hop radio and maybe even rock radio. So let's see what people are talking about. Hey, first off, country music, thank you for welcoming us into your house. I, uh, I don't view music and genres. To me, there's two genres of music, good music and bad music. I think we're in the good, good part. Probably didn't have to say that. That was cringe. 
Um, I mean, I, but he's probably nervous. I mean, I want to thank the John Denver estate for trusting us with this interpolation. I want to thank, uh, interpolation interpolations, the wrong word. He meant interpretation, but all right, fair enough. Like I said, he's nervous. My collaborators, everyone that's on stage with me, uh, Travis Barker, uh, Sean Singh, all, Nick Long, Charlie Handsome, Slim Bays, Justin, I mean, I, you know, I'm so, I'm, this, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, dude, Jelly Roll. Yeah! Bubba! Yeah! Bubba! Yeah! Jelly, I love you. We went from 10 years ago hating each other to elevating each other. Comparison is the thief of joy. Yeah, Comparison is the thief of joy. There is enough room on this couch for everybody we found, we found camaraderie in the chaos. And last year I was right there, right there, sitting in that seat watching my boy rock in that stage. And I was like, man, one day I hope we're up there. And we're here. We're here. Thank you guys. Not to sound, I mean, why are there so many black people at the country music, People's Choice Country Awards? Not that there shouldn't be or there can't be, but why are there? Anyway, I do believe he performed that song, Lonely Road, but he turned it into Country Roads. Country Road, Country, whoever did the song. I don't, I don't know country, people. Let's check it out. Oh, Matt Reif presented him. Look at that. Everybody's educated white guy. I will say this, and this is going to make me sound so lame. I do like his hair. I like his hair. Don't like his outfit. It's whack, but his hair is cool. I like it. I used to have blonde and black hair at the same time, so I can get with it. Now, I didn't have it at, I don't know, how old is he? 35? But no, <laughs> I was like 22, but nonetheless. <laughs> West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah River. Life is older, older than the trees, younger than the mountains, growing like a breeze. Country road, take me home to the plains. I belong. This is the other thing I found interesting, too, is he did Country Road, or Roads, whatever it's called, and just changed the lyrics. I mean, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. And I do see that he he won Best Country Song, or I'm sorry, Cover Song at this award show, too. Apparently, he covered some other country artist song. This should have just won Best co a Cover Song. It's a, co it's a cover. He changed the lyrics. He, that's it. Whatever. West Virginia, now my love, take me home. Hey, I'm gonna go downtown. I ain't been in a long time. I'm taking back Sundays. Since you took away my life. There's some things that I know now. A couple songs that I'd rewrite. Yeah, start over like Mondays. One strong. I mean, he is dialed into that singing, though, man. I mean, for a guy who didn't start out as a singer to just look. I'm, I'm going to, again, I'm, I'm going to sound like such a stan, <laughs> but for a guy to start out hip hop and not sing and to transition into a full blown front man singer who also plays guitar to be this comfortable only a couple of years later, dude, that's not easy to do. Many people, there are many people on earth who have tried to do this and have failed because they just can't do it. They don't have the nerves. They don't have the voice. They just don't have it. And he, he's got that fuck it that it takes to be a superstar. Look at all the cowboy hats. On a week night. See, I heard the devil wears Prada, but I couldn't read the tags in your horn. I mean, that's, so that's, I've that's you mad, but I'll wait rapid. for you. Keep rapping. Just this is not the face I'm Or what rap is today. And I probably could have saved this, but instead I let it crash. Because I don't trust no one to love me back. But she say I He's do. actually doing what country guys This is guys not the place for you. Lonely road. Place. Well, we went wrong. Where'd you come oh. now? It's been it's a ghost like town, a voice. and I'm still here, all alone. 
And if you can salvage my soul, would you sacrifice this life to not die alone? Cause even a palace ain't home without you, so I might leave here soon, but I want to leave you this song. Hey! Lonely road, take me on. We went wrong Where'd you go now? It's better to go down And I'm still here Love you. Love you back. One of my favorite songs ever. Get up! He's... <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> One of my favorite songs ever that I haven't heard. Yeah, good for him, man. I, you know. So back to the question: Are there? Is there only good music and bad music? No. 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 Like I said, there's only bad music made by people who don't appreciate it that sometimes find success, but whatever. While we're on the subject of good music, not bad music, you know, we should have done this last week, but Beartooth, one of our favorite bands, one of this show's favorite bands, put out a new song and holy shit, it's good. And it just deserves attention from the show. So we're just gonna go ahead and do it. So poppy, so poppy, but so them, so good. Let's go. We know time ain't gonna move slow. If you're watching me, if you're listening, I gotta let 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 you know. I need it right now. I need it right now. I need it. I need it right now. I need your attention. I need it right now. I need it. I need it right now. I need your Come on. Attention. I mean, I don't know many other rock bands or metal bands or punk bands that are being as anthemic with their choruses. I mean, it's just big, it's just big. And as it sits here, as we sit here today, I'm going to be the first one to tell you that this band should be way bigger than they are. I think it's a matter of time. I think it's a matter of time. I think the last record caught many people's attention. I think it was a crossover pop, sort of metal pop record. I think it caught the attention of a lot of people who wouldn't have listened to it otherwise or wouldn't have listened to them otherwise. And I think they're on the verge of, to be honest with you, doing what I think a lot of people thought A Day to Remember was going to do a few years ago after they had the song Rescue Me. And I think it was going to happen. With, I think people thought it was going to happen with the album You're Welcome, which I love, but a lot of people don't from what I've read on the internet anyway. It's the internet, people. I love it. Remember I said that. I moved on. I'm putting new chords in my songs A new way I speak A new lyric sheet for you to sing, sing, sing along So I wish, who I saw There's no time for thinking so small If you're watching me, if you're listening I gotta risk, risk, risk it all Cause I need it right now, I need it right now I need it, I need it right now
Let's go. Well, this is it, my last shot. To show you everything I got. I won't wait it out, I won't live without, I won't be someone I'm not. So come join me at the top. Come join me at the top. So come join me. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Man just knows how to do it. They're just they're in a groove. They got it. They absolutely got it. They absolutely got it. What can you do? That was Beartooth. A T T N. Beautiful. Can't wait to hear new music from them. I mean, it's at this point, to me, it's inevitable that the next thing they do, huge. We'll see. Okay. So I've been asked to talk about this Diddy stuff again. I'll say one thing about it. We talked about it last week, and if you didn't hear what we said, go back and watch the last episode, episode 211. Here's what I'm going to say about it. I did see recently that Elon Musk posted this list of folks who have attended Diddy parties. So are they guilty too? He said, so when are they going to start speaking out or something like that? But here's the thing about that list. It's not Diddy parties at his house. It's not the freak off parties. These are parties that Diddy hosted all around the world for various occasions, for award shows, for music festivals, whatever the case may be. So look, if you're assuming that those are the same as the private parties that he had at his house where he videotaped everything going on, you're insane. You're insane. So no, I'm not going to condemn some of the people I saw on the list, such as Barack Obama, Michelle Obama, Mark Wahlberg. And it will and he did I will give I will give credit to Elon. And to be honest with you, I don't even, I don't even know if he was the original person who Put out this list. I think he might have just retweeted or re-X'd. But they did say what the party was and what the function was and why it was a party. So if it was a Grammy party or if it was a a party at uh, the, the, the Cannes Music Fest, uh, Cannes Film Festival or something like that, which is why Mark Wahlberg was at one, one of the film festivals. Did he have a party? Mark Wahlberg went. So I'm not going to condemn everyone who's linked to Diddy's name. I'm just not. And if the people on the if people on social media want to, have fun. It's like I said in the last episode, he's connected to so many people, but there were people who are connected and that he's connected to that did go to parties where there was illegal activity happening that he's got the upper hand on. So don't be surprised if he doesn't do time. That's all I'm going to say. Recently, the Your Mom's House podcast, for those of you that don't know, that's Tom Segura. Comedian Tom Segura and his comedian wife, Christina Pajitsky. Very popular podcast. They had Corey Taylor from Slipknot and Stone Sour on and whatever other band you know him from. However you know him. It's Corey Taylor from Slipknot to me. But they got him talking about some of the controversies recently in rock music. Um... Let's watch it together. I have not watched this. I'm curious what his take is because he, he has been known to not be a guy to necessarily shy away from controversy. I think he's a pretty low-key guy in his private life. With that said, when it comes to music and when it comes to the music industry, he's very outspoken. So I'm curious what his take is. Let's check it out. 
So <laughs> about a month ago, mm-hmm. she and maybe it was six weeks ago. There's no talk of Oasis. Nothing. Nothing in the ether. She ethers, really. You. She I, puts it out there that she's willing to go airtight with the Gallagher brothers that everybody knows and the other one who not everybody knows. Right. So she's <laughs> willing to give herself all three inputs and and she's like, I'll do that. Oh, if wow. You guys, and then... He's like, great. Why are you telling me this? Not really thinking it's that funny yet. All of a sudden, I don't see her for a few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and then during that period, they're like, guess what? There's new Oasis shows. Yeah. And I was like, hey... <laughs> Where have you been? It just right. came yeah. together. You wanna... Mike? Tom Segura looks 80 years old. Tom's funny, stand up wise, anyway. He looks 80. How old is he? 45? Anyway. That's what <laughs> happens when you go to Manchester. I may have dipped out a bit, love. Yeah. But now I'm waiting for them to come to America. That's the next. Like, I don't know what I'm, I'm right. going to top the. Yeah, I don't know how you're going to top airtight. The threesome. Yeah. But let's yeah. just I say mean, you're welcome. Sealant, that was, I mean, that was a bold choice. Yeah, you guys by have the been way. in a band for a long time. Oh, have you ever, God. like, gone nine deep in someone? Hell yes. Uh, and some maggots. Honest. Well, Political. hold on. Let me see. Let, let, me do the, let me do the math. Oh, my God. Yeah, I can't talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All I can say. This was before the inter- interwebs. Yeah, so it can't ruin my life. It's Let's a different time. Way. Yes, it's exactly. A different era. Not everybody had their this. fucking phone out. Yeah. Dude, like, let's just say, like, there's some crazy shit. Yeah, but, of course. Of course. Yeah. That's why you I become mean, a we rock were, well, star. That's why you become a fucking exactly. You know, I chicks. I have very strong opinions about a lot of this shit. It's and, like, what's your name? Amen. Oh, well, I don't just yeah. I don't want to hear your name. It's like it was just a different scene man yeah you know and people don't realize that you, if you it's it's like it's like watching a movie from the 60s it's like watching a bond film and then judging it based on modern yeah principles yes it doesn't fucking work that no, way man. True. like yeah. you cannot do that with someone in that age you know it is an absolutely different fucking ball game different. It's, it's true. yeah yeah now what's going on with perry farrell and dave navarro that was that was my wife waking me up and going have you seen this shit yeah, and i was like yeah, uh no it it's sad man because i know both of them sure and dave navarro is one of the sweetest souls on the planet perry also so i did tell a story <laughs> on the episode last week where i met both of them and what he's about to say i don't think is true is very sweet man like his always he's never been Okay, Dave Navarro was not sweet. He was a cunt. He was a dick. But he's a rock star, so he's allowed to be. Anything but fucking kind to me. And seeing that, I I don't know what's happening there. Um, and I obviously, I don't want to make assumptions because I don't want sure. it to get fucking blown out. It looks, it I, it could be chemical. It could be behavioral. It could be because they've known each other for fucking yes. 40 years, yeah. man. And there's so many myths about their relationship <laughs> Who fucking knows what that would be at this point, you know? Right. So I just hope he's okay. I hope Dave's okay. I mean, I reached out to him to see if he was, uh, it's my phone. Oh, it's yours? Okay. Shit. Yeah, I was vibrating. Okay. Stop. There. Okay. You texted um, Dave. I Yeah, I texted Dave to see how he was doing. He's, he hit me back. He was like, he's cool, you know? But, Poor buddy. He but obviously he doesn't want to say anything because right now they're just trying to figure out what the fuck they're going to do. They canceled. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's such a bummer. I wanted to see that yeah. tour so bad. I've been waiting to see the original four. For me yeah. and Clown, actually. Clown's a massive Jane's Addiction fan, dude. Oh, like, Jane's. He's like, he studied that shit like the Sapruder film. And really? he came to me just like, dude, Taylor, you don't even fucking know. Like, it's crazy. But don't you yeah. feel like they're so underrated? I feel like Jane's, 100%. Why the fuck weren't, I think they're considered one of the great, especially coming from Los Angeles. Yeah. They were like an LA band, and yeah. I got to fucking watch that growing up. And I got to see them at the first Lollapalooza uh, when I was high on acid. Right. Yeah, I was there. Oh, you were yeah, Irvine yeah. Meadows, bro. Yeah. And I was like, why? His voice is like from another realm, and they're so. He's talented. one of the most. There's no way to recreate his voice. No. And the people who try, they, it sounds like they're, they're going to kill themselves. You know, yeah. like they. I would agree with that. He does not. Perry does not. We've talked about it on the show. There are singers you don't try to recreate or don't try to sound like. I would put Perry in that group for sure. Yeah. Like it's so high up there, but it was so perfect. 
with I compared nothing shocking uh, with welcome uh, with uh, appetite record. for destruction. Okay. To me, it nothing it shocking is, is same time. one of the well, it's just one right. of those examples of like a perfect album, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, because you can put that album on and just start it and never skip Press anything. Play. Like just even good. Thank You Boys is fucking wonderful to listen to. You know, it's just a great great album you know um damn yeah it's i hope they're okay you know and and knowing how interband relationships can be that's fucking tough dude especially for a band that's been around that long dude yeah because you know like i mean end of the day it, there's no telling what it is right but you understand that those those dynamics can shift and change and be yeah. challenging and and who knows what the Story, I mean, it? I know bands that have been around for five years that have that shit happen. Yeah. You know, like it's it's just you just never know when you spend that much time on the road with people, and you go from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows and everything in between. Shit's gonna get personal, and you just never know what's gonna happen on any given day. Sid and I, who was one of my best friends, was my brother. I almost killed him one night. <laughs> Uh, when we were doing, we were recording uh, disaster pieces at Love. It was a, I want to say it was London Arena, but I might be wrong. And he did exactly what we told him not to do. And he, I was so fucking pissed. I was also hammered, so mm -hmm. that didn't fucking help anything. <laughs> he came back, and there's a clip online, and it's so taken out of context. Um, we all had, most of us had body cameras, so. What he would do is he would go out into the middle of the audience when we would do the sit down part during Spit It Out. Mm -hmm. And we told him not to do it this time because we didn't want people to steal those cameras. Mm. And he did. And they did. And he didn't understand why we were mad. And mm. he comes back and he goes, <laughs> I'm fucking livid. I'm just like, Ugh. and he goes, Dude, you got to tell them to give the fucking camera back. And I just whipped around on him. I was just like, shut your fucking. It's one of the most <laughs> evil moments of my life. And I just didn't give a shit. Yeah. And to this day, I feel bad about it. Like, And it's a very real moment that's out there for everybody yeah. to see. And taken out of context, it's so fucking horrible. you know? Right. But, but also, don't forget right. that all of us have those moments exactly they're just not always captured right yeah people and, see. It's, and some people don't admit that they have those moments yeah i mean when he blew himself up tom has his on twitter recently because he's sid i like i facetimed him and he was in the er like oh, he, no. he had the and i was just like but he was also one of the first people to call me after my spinal surgery so like that's how close we are like we go from ah, to, like, yeah so it's you know. your real brother. Exactly, yeah. dude. Yeah. And anybody who's been in a fucking family knows how that is. Of man. course. Of course. So. Now, what about Dave Grohl? What's up with his baby mama shit? Oh. Dude, I'm so... But Let me tell you something, bro. Here, Sorry. Can, here's my take. <laughs> no, it's... No, let me just say that. <laughs> I will say this, okay? Like, I, apropos of this earlier discussion of, like, you guys are fucking rock stars. You're knocking shit over. Right. Old bitches be falling and spraining their ankles. <laughs> but but she knows, hey, that's fucking slipped out over there, honey. Right. You better be careful. So I feel like this whole, I'm just a nice guy. I'm, I'm a nice guy. Like, bitch, no, you're not. You're a rock star. Right. And you fucking impregnate bitches, fine. Because that's what they do. That's what they've been doing for the 70s, the 80s. Like, why come out with a statement announcing it to everybody? And secondly, why are you busting nuts in your side piece, bro? All valid questions. Okay. Before he answers, let me just say this. We have not talked about Dave Grohl on this podcast in that situation. And I've been asked about this mainly from my wife because we both love Dave, Dave Grohl. Here's what I think the curse of Dave Grohl is. I think he has always been considered this nice guy. I think in the public eye, he's always done the right thing. I think he's always been considered, well, with Foo Fighters anyway, I think he's always been considered this sort of Jesus on the cross type character for rock and roll. There's nothing he can do wrong. With that said, what he did is normal. If you think rock stars are the only people cheating on their wives and impregnating other women, you're insane. It happens all over the world, across all demographics, across all socioeconomic classes of people. People do that, men and women. Do I agree with it? Do I think it's right? No. 
I think it's a shitty move, but he didn't commit a crime. He, he just, he fucked up. So am I going to stop listening to the Foo Fighters because he cheated on his wife and had a side piece that he got pregnant? No. Was his, If his side piece was underage, then we'd be talking about a different thing. But she wasn't. So he's living a normal life. He's a normal person. He's human. He makes mistakes like we all do. We all make these same mistakes. He's not above them because he's a rock star. If anything, he's prone to making those mistakes because he's a rock star, kind of like she just said, in a very condescending, not funny way. It's Christina. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure I was are. hoping it would yeah. come up. Yeah. Get a vasectomy. Um, it's oh, fuck, dude. It's so messy. Yeah. Like just 100 percent messy. And yeah, it's messy, but it's really that not okay. I'm not defending him, and I don't condone cheating. I don't. I'm married. I would never. But the fact of the matter is, is normal people who are not rock stars and are not celebrities do this same shit. And believe me, they're not under the, under the microscope for it. They get divorced. They go to battle over their kids. They have second families. They do all this shit. Dave Grohl is not above it by any means. You do know yeah. Dave Grohl. I do know Dave Grohl. So? Um, he is one of the nicest people on the planet. And heard it is he going to say that about yeah. everyone? Yeah, sometimes. What's that? What was it? Mistakes were made, Christina. Mistakes were I mean, made. and I don't listen. I, I'll tell you exactly why they put out a press release. Yeah, because well, I'm so confused. Because he wanted to get ahead of it. He wanted to get ahead of it because he knew that if he didn't say something, somebody else was going to say something. Because mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think we even know who the baby mama is, right? Not yet, by the time this. But comes out. I can guarantee you, as soon as she finds out that. He may or may not be a part of everything. She was going to say something, mm. and it's called controlling the narrative. Mm -hmm. So he got ahead of it, yeah. and you know, I will say this: obviously, very irresponsible. And I know there are a lot of disappointed fans out there yeah. because of because of the the image that he has developed. You know, but I have to remind people that we're not perfect. You know, he was exactly. one of the last people to really have that image you know because yeah. you can't really think of anyone else i mean well I bill know. cosby was the last oh, guy and what the fuck what happened there you know talking about <laughs> putting pops in bottles <laughs> drink <laughs> this yeah fucking holy <sighs> shit but that's what i'm saying i think i look i'll be yeah i just resent the like i'm a good guy but then you're not i, I he didn't do that to himself everyone else did that to him he didn't push the I'm a good guy thing on anyone. We did that. That's what bothers me about this. He didn't want people to think that. He never pushed that on anyone. He didn't. That That's ridiculous. He just was a good guy. Or so we thought. Or so the media portrayed for years and years that he was a good guy. He didn't push that on anyone. Just be, oh, well, here's the on thing. On, everybody, here's the thing. Press pause. That... Tom's putting on chapstick. Everybody uh Oh, stop. here we go. <laughs> This is that, that's elaborate right there. I mean, that is this? that took a long time. He has I, to open I appreciate his mouth. that I was here. He can't do it. Thank you, mouth that. I was trying to break so up silly. the uh, seriousness of the dialogue. Um, well, we're, we're talking listen, about. Okay, go ahead. This happening, and I'm going to say something very controversial. I love it. This happening does not mean he's not a nice person, because I happen to know him as a person. It means he's got fucking issues and he yes. fucked up. Yes. Of course. It means he has flaws like all of us, like the three people talking about this right now. No, in this situation, no, he's not a good person. Doesn't mean he can't be a good person because he made a mistake. Now, again, we draw lines. People commit crimes, bad crimes. He didn't commit a crime. Morally speaking, whatever your morals are, maybe you thought he was a bad person. Okay. But we all know someone who's cheated on their significant other. We all know someone who's cheated on their significant other and impregnated someone else or been impregnated by someone else while cheating. He's not above that. He's a normal person. He writes really great fucking songs. He's not perfect. Um, yeah, no it shit. is going to be very difficult for his family. Oh, that's the part um, that kills me. Kids. Yeah. <clears throat> Girls. It's, and I'm not going to make any assumptions about why or how it happened, you know, because obviously... I mean, I'm I'm sober, but at the same time, 
you know i've gone through my own shit you know and so i also I can, think the uh i mean i everyone has valid points but the the good person bad person thing is not just black and white right Pe and people, that's exactly it people are generally right it it exists in the gray area of did like he the, do something horrible yeah yes but it oh, shouldn't yeah the yeah. only thing that defines exactly him is, if that's the one thing that defines him then what the fuck are we doing here you i know, know but only if you present yourself is as it, a certain thing and it's like dude don't then that's get, what that's what i'm saying like saying, you and i that. never Do pretend that. to be normal people here's the thing he didn't present himself that way again i want to make this very clear i don't know that dave Grohl ever got in front of a camera and said hey i'm the nicest guy on earth I'm the friendliest, most trustworthy rock star of all time. I do everything right. It's disappointing. It's disappointing. Um, I think I'm just mad at my dad. This is fair, Corey. She's mad. At <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, let's go there. Let's go there. I mean, so. <laughs> Corey, I mean, what did this sorry. bring up I mean, for you? I, I think it did. Head, I think it brought up my dad, like my hatred for my dad being right. a piece of shit, and like some those guys are just a type. And I really wish society would just be accepting of the piece of shit type. Instead right. of being like, you should get married and have kids. Like, no, 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 no. This guy, this guy does his thing. You are mad right. at your dad, though. Of course I am. No, I'm saying I think all this is is of channeling. Of course it is, yeah, Tom. You're really not mad at Dave at no, all. No, I don't care about Dave. Tom. <laughs> you're just, you know. But it's like the gays. It's just like the gays. It's just like the gays. Like, let I the agree. gays be the gays, and then they don't marry women. Yeah, right. release, release the gays. Lives. Right. Yeah. Release the gays. Release just be gay. The gays. And if you want to dump clips and have other kids then just do it with you know don't tie a knot first don't right? tie a knot don't yeah. ruin people's lives Ooh, hey jeez yeah anyway uh again i don't think he's above getting married being happy having kids being happy and then he's unhappy he makes a mistake while being married and has sex with another woman and impregnates her that's not uncommon so to act like it, it, like this is some sort of thing that only applies to people who have the power to do so or whatever, it's like, it's stupid. Stupid. No. He's a victim of what many people have been a victim of. Whatever that, case, whatever, whatever that thing is. They get unhappy. They get bored. Whatever that thing is. I don't know. I'm